So what is a crossover? This is probably one of the most overused terms in the auto industry. What some manufacturers do is they take a car platform, then they build it up to make it look like a traditional SUV. Then there are other manufacturers that take an existing station wagon and they add SUV elements to the design. Subaru was the first car company to successfully launch a crossover. They took their basic legacy wagon, added some more ground clearance, more rugged cladding on the outside and all-terrain tires, and they called it the Outback. Since the middle of the 1990s, the Outback has been a huge success, as buyers who would never be caught dead driving a station wagon suddenly became attracted to the go-anywhere attitude the Outback projected. This is the fourth generation Outback. They've completely dropped the Legacy Wagon from the lineup, so in order to please both Wagon and Outback buyers, they've had to make some updates. The Outback is based on the Subaru Legacy sedan, and for 2010, both have grown in size. The Outback is much longer than the outgoing model, which provides much more passenger legroom and it increases the cargo capacity. Since the regular Legacy wagon has been dropped, the Outback has to appeal to a broader market, so Subaru has toned down the SUV influences on the outside. One way Subaru turned kind of basic Legacy station wagons into Outbacks is by putting in lower body cladding. Now in previous versions, it was much bigger, it came farther up the door. For this latest model, they've toned it down a bit. All right, here's something that's very simple and clever. I like it. Now, you've got your roof rails along the side. It makes it look much more like a crossover, right? But what you do is when you lift up this latch, you turn the roof rails into the roof rack. They're hidden away here. That helps reduce the amount of drag and saves on fuel. With these larger dimensions, the Outback really has come into a new space in the crossover segment. Got lots more leg room, headroom, and tons more cargo. It gives you a great alternative to a compact SUV like the CRV or the Chevy Equinox. The 17 inch alloy wheels are framed by large fenders, and the ride height is still impressive with over 20 centimeters or 8 inches of ground clearance. The lift gate is large but is manually operated. No power lift gate is even offered. The dash is a big step forward with more care and attention to detail. The rather bland center stack on the old model has made way to a clean and bold interface. The base model comes with 10-way power adjustable driver's seat, radio controls on the steering wheel, optional Bluetooth system that's easily operated in the center console, and heated front seats. The back seats split and fold forward, but they can also be reclined for more rear passenger comfort. Subaru wasn't content to just upgrade the interior and the exterior. They also made some significant changes in the transmission and engine to really improve the fuel economy. The 2.5-liter four-cylinder boxer-style engine provides excellent torque and is rated at 170 horsepower. The four-cylinder models can be equipped with a six-speed manual or an all-new continuously variable transmission, or CVT, which provides much better fuel consumption compared to the outgoing model. There is a 3.6-liter .6 six-cylinder engine offered as well, which pumps out 256 horsepower. But this engine is only available with a conventional five-speed automatic. What I don't like about the Outback is that it feels a lot bigger than it really is. I have a hard time figuring out exactly where the front end is, and if it wasn't for the backup camera, I'd have an issue finding the back end as well. Now, it's got a very rugged feel to it when you're driving, firm brakes and heavy steering. Personally, I'd prefer something that has a little bit of a lighter feel to it. It really is a shame that this Outback isn't available with the two and a half liter turbo four cylinder found in the Legacy sedan. That car is a lot of fun to drive and it comes with a manual transmission. Now speaking of the CVT, Subaru has moved to this kind of transmission to improve fuel consumption. When equipped with the CVT, the Outback's fuel rating is just 9.5 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and only 6.9 on the highway. This is a similar transmission to the one that Audi uses with a metal belt which makes it more robust and offers quicker acceleration. The drawback to any CVT is that the engine kind of drones when passing on the highway. So Subaru has to basically appease two masters. They have traditional Outback owners that like this vehicle because it's a little more rugged, it's higher off the ground, it has good ground clearance, you can go to your cottage or cabin, go skiing and it's going to be able to do all those things with ease. 
Now they have to also appeal to the traditional legacy wagon buyer. They don't make that car anymore. So on road, this car now has to feel refined and smooth and appeal to those buyers. And I think they've achieved that. You get it out on the open road, it's smooth, it's quiet. It does have a slightly heavy steering feel to it, but that makes the car feel solid. So I think they've been able to appease both masters. The Outback starts at just under 29,000 and it tops out at about 40,000. So Zach, I just want to know if you think that this iconic vehicle is going to be a better alternative to an SUV. Well, absolutely. One thing that Subaru did on price is they dropped the price of their cars and they've added more content, so there's more value here. Plus, you get a better handling car. You're lower down to the ground than a taller traditional crossover. Plus, of the design of the boxer engine, the horizontally opposed engine, it sits lower in the car, so it goes through the corners better. In addition to that, that boxer engine provides a lot of torque, so it helps you get up and away uh, with ease. Now, another thing that Subaru's done is they've made this Outback bigger, which offers more interior space, and it makes it more comfortable for everybody involved, and you get more cargo space. On the downside, on the sedan you can get the turbo four-cylinder, but on this Outback it isn't offered, which is a shame because that's a lot of fun to drive. And the CVT, or the continuously variable transmission, is a compromise. You get better fuel consumption, but it doesn't have the same kind of driving dynamics that you get from a traditional automatic. It is available, a traditional automatic, in the six-cylinder, so if you like that, that might be the one to get. Lacey, what do you think? Well, Zach, I really like the improvements on the interior. The styling is definitely much better than the outgoing model. You also get standard all-wheel drive, which is a fantastic thing, especially for Canadian winters. I like the fact that you've got two engine options to choose from, and it does have great fuel economy. But again, I agree with Zach. On the downside, you have to have the CVT, which I really was not too impressed with on the Outback. And I mentioned it earlier, but it just drives a little bit too rugged for me. It's funny you should mention rugged because Subaru used the actor Paul Hogan for many years in their advertising. That rugged Australian guy? Yeah, good day and all of that. Well, you know what? They used them for so long, they did surveys of potential Subaru buyers and they found out they actually believe that Subaru is an Australian company, not Japanese, with Japanese engineering and design. So now Subaru uses Japanese in all of their advertising. Fair dinkum. Who? Yeah, that's Ozzy. <laughs> Want more? Check out drivingtelevision.com for expanded reviews and more automotive stories.